Yeah, I'm trying to program this new phone you got me. No, I'm good. I'm good. There's nothing going on here at work. Really? Well, no, I'm going to get off pretty early, so... Yeah, I won't be... Hey, how you doing? Good. Do you have a minute? Uh, yeah, I'm not doing anything. Come on in. Come on in. Hey, yeah, let me let you go. Yeah, I'm going to get off early, like around maybe 1 o'clock. There's nothing going on, so... Yeah, I'll see you later. Hey, sorry, I'm Greenwich. What's I up? just wanted to talk to you real quick about yeah, sure. my EPR. I'm not doing gotta... much. There's nothing going on here at work. You know, I'm going to leave early. So. How are you leaving early? None of my business. You know oh. what? That's cool. Um, no, seriously though, mm -hmm. I just got my EPR back, mm -hmm. and I'm a little disappointed because I got rated as a four. Really? Yeah, and I've worked my tail off this year, and I was reading through it. I just hmm. don't feel like it really articulates all of my accomplishments over the last year. Can I take a look at it real quick? Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, I got my right. EPR earlier this week, and um, I got a five, but, I mean, I, 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 I know I haven't done nearly as much as you do around here, but, I mean, actually, I happen to know my supervisor writes really, really good bullets. So, oh. I mean, I don't know what to tell you, but, I mean, it kind of stinks for you, but, so, I mean, you want a mint? <laughs> No, I'd prefer a supervisor who had strong bullet writing skills. Thanks, though. Hello, I'm Mass Sergeant Keith Cavanaugh. And I'm Mass Sergeant Veronica Ross. Recognition of our personnel for their achievements, accomplishments, or daily tasks is essential to the morale of our units and effectiveness of our mission in the Air Force today. As you can tell, there might be problems out there that cause the wrong people to get recognized or the right people to miss out on due recognition. So we're here to help you learn how to write the right stuff. Nice. First, we need to remove barriers. The barriers I'm talking about is not gathering information, procrastination, which is my personal fave, and just not taking the time to work on writing bullets. Next, to help alleviate writing fears, we'll focus on how to construct a bullet. The main focus will be the act, fact, and impact, along with ensuring it's accurate, brief, and specific. Third, we'll help show you how to standardize your writing style to the writing style across the Air Force. You know, a lot of time can be saved by standardizing our writing. Effective leaders ensure the right people get recognized. By ensuring your personnel are recognized for their hard work and dedication, you're creating a positive environment that can only result in higher morale and a willingness amongst personnel to work for you. To achieve our objective today, here's an overview of what we'll be covering. First, we'll identify how to gather information and how to sort out what's important and what's not. Next, we'll give you some writing tips to think about as you draft your bullets, such as using fluff words and avoiding too much white space. And finally, you will have an opportunity to practice and compare your bullets to what we've prepared for you. So, Sergeant Ross, why is it important to write or construct bullets that capture what our subordinates are doing? Well, I think it's important for personnel to get recognized. That's the most important thing. If they're doing a good job, let them know. Tell them that you appreciate their efforts. We can express our appreciation for their hard work through constructing effective bullets that convey their accomplishments, specifically in their EPR and OPR. Gathering information is critical to the success of constructing a bullet. The first step is to gather as much information as you can. Be sure to include the who what, where, why, how much, how many, time or money saved, but get the numbers in there. The more comprehensive you get with the information, the more information you will have to work with when constructing the bullet. 
So with all this information, who's actually responsible to gather? Gathering of the information, in my opinion, and what I've seen across the Air Force is both. It comes down to communication between the supervisor and the subordinate. The subordinate is responsible for informing the supervisor of their accomplishments, but the supervisor is responsible for telling the subordinate that they want that information. A lot of times our airmen don't have a great understanding or concept about a strategic vision or what it takes in order to make a bullet. So you need to tell them what you need, the information, the comprehensive, everything and anything so that you can write an effective bullet so that their EPR or OPR says exactly what it is that they have done throughout the year. So I'm telling you now, supervisors, you will need to stay engaged. One way you could gather information is to simply talk to your people. Find out what they're doing in simple conversation. It's easy, it's sincere, and it doesn't take much time. Something wrong, Sir Ross? Yeah, you sit here and you're talking about talking with your people. Yeah. Well, I remember on Monday when you stopped to talk to Sergeant Sanchez, I don't think you're necessarily getting all the information you need from your airmen. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Sergeant Sanchez. How was your weekend with the kids? I don't have any kids. Awesome. Tell them I said, hey. All right. Good job. Good morning, Sergeant Sanchez. Good morning, Sergeant Ralph. So what did you do this weekend? Well, you know, actually this weekend, we um, worked with Habitat for Humanity. There was a team of 15 of us from the TEC. We put in about 16 hours total work. Wow, Sergeant Sanchez, that is really amazing. So you said 15 individuals? Yeah. In 16 hours. Yes, ma'am. Did you actually help organize it or did you just volunteer for it? Well, you know, I organized it. I coordinated the whole event with Habitat for Humanity. That's really great stuff, Sergeant Sanchez. Thanks. You have a great day. Thank you, ma'am. You too. Point taken. So, now that you know how to gather information, let's look at some writing tips that can help standardize the bullet writing process. Here are some condensed words that are used across the Air Force. Use these condensed words to prevent you from having to remove critical information. However, do not use too many condensed words in one bullet. There is a couple of other writing tips that you'll want to keep in mind when constructing your bullet, such as do not over-exaggerate what your personnel have accomplished. Here is one example of an overly exaggerated bullet. The solution to all problems. They broke the code to making things happen. They invented water, walked on it, and turned it into wine. To be honest, this is actually an okay statement to say about your personnel. If it's truly what you think about them, but use it in daily talk with your commander or your superintendent. Don't use it in an EPR or OPR. Basically, when you use an exaggerated statement like this, you're telling the reader that your walk-on-water airman did not do enough in 365 days to write one bullet about. Let's look at another bullet here, the second one. Remarkable breadth of experience and technical wisdom. Multi-talented senior NCO with a great range of capabilities. Now the first bullet is a personal favorite of mine because I wrote it. However, it's definitely exaggerated, unless you're from biblical times. However, the second one is more believable, but this is what we consider a fluff statement because there's no accomplishment or impact. The unintentional consequences of including statements like these is the reader will assume that the individual hasn't done enough or you as a supervisor don't care to take the time to compose a good bullet. Either way, the subordinate loses out. So let's look at a bullet that has an accomplishment and an impact. Alright, so we have expertly directed audiovisual needs for Civil Air Patrol resulted in successful professional event. We have an accomplishment and we have an impact. So we basically have a bullet statement. But there is still some work that needs to be done. Take a look at the accomplishment and the impact. Note the expertly. 
and how the bullet leaves a lot of white space at the end. When you put in the word expertly, we already know that. The bullet should leave it implied that your subordinate is the expert. And so by effectively constructing a bullet, you need to remove that expertly directed and just put in the directed and fill it in with more information that supports the accomplishment. At the very end, after event on the impact, that's what we call too much white space. You need to find another way to rework this bullet so that you take up as much space as you need to convey the message of what exactly it was that your airman did. Let's look at the fourth bullet here. Directed audiovisual productions for Civil Air Patrol Conference. Enhanced experience for 67 senior officers and enlisted. Notice here we removed the fluff word expertly and spelled out conference, which eliminate the white space. Then we included the who and how many, which is your critical information, and condensed the words officer and enlisted to give us one effective bullet. Eliminating the fluff and white space along with condensing words are some valuable writing tips. Another tip to spark some ideas is to simply share bullets. Sharing bullets is one of my all-time favorites. You can have multiple people in your organization taking on a volunteer opportunity. You have one that organized and the others that participate in it. So you can take one very effectively written bullet and share it across the organization. Make sure you're giving individuals credit where credit is due. If one person organized and one person participated, you can't have the individuals that participated organized. So that's what we mean by give credit where credit is due. In this bullet, we had one individual that organized 300 volunteers to help bring home a fallen hero's remains and provide honor and service to a Marine. Then everyone else who were those volunteers were the individuals who participated. By using an effective action verb of organized or participated, you're able to give people the proper credit. So now that we've covered the writing tips, let's start working on how to construct bullets. The first type is the bullet format using act, fact, and impact. Remember, when you are focusing on act, fact, and impact, you'll want to make sure it's accurate, it's brief, and it is specific. Meaning, keep the exaggeration out of it and get rid of the fluff. When we are composing bullets, one format is using the three-part bullet. The three-part bullet is comprised of the act, fact, and the impact. The act is a single action described with an action verb. For example, instituted training program for 300 personnel. The fact is what is used to support that action. Authored and delivered 10 training guides. The impact shows who or what was affected, such as the individual, the unit, the wing, or the Air Force. With this one, we have decreased average production time by one hour. Put it all together and you can have instituted training program for 300 personnel. Author delivered 10 training guides. Decreased average training time by one hour. Remember though, when you are conveying the impact, look at who or what the impact affected. Did it affect the individual, the unit, wing, or Air Force? Don't exaggerate, but make sure you give credit where credit is due. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this bullet actually looks written out. Looks pretty good. But if you note at the very end, after the impact, there's a, quite a bit of white space in there. Let's see what we can do to fill up some of that white space. You're right, and it's very easy. If we just spell out our, we could get rid of the white space, but there's still something wrong with this bullet. What? Let's see here. Um, instituted training, training, author delivered training, decreased average training. Oh, honestly, this is too many times. You should never use the same word over and over like this. It can detract the reader and actually take away credibility from a bullet. So let's try to switch out some of these words of training. Yeah, not only that, but I remember the information provided originally stated that production was decreased by one hour, not training. 
So this one definitely looks better and it's accurate, brief, and specific. And I also like how you took out the training guides and put in 10 guides and that's how you were able to get in the decreased average production time. Exactly. It's a really good way to rework that bullet. Quick note here. You could also show the decrease in production as a percentage, meaning if the original production time was two hours, then you could state decreased production time by 50%. I like the decreased production time by 50%. I think that's better. It does look better. Now that we covered three part bullets, let's start working on how to construct two part bullets. This format uses act and fact combined in one statement, then the impact. Remember, we still need to focus on accuracy, brevity, and specificity. Keep the fluff out and white space to a minimum. So here, composing a two part bullet, you have the act and fact combined into one statement. For example, processed over 300 records with no error during unit mobility exercise. Now, what's the difference between the, the two and three part? We just took out that semicolon and we combined the two. The impact is no different than a three part bullet impact. One of the most important parts of the bullet is the impact. So, we need to look at how did the action affect the individual, the unit, the wing, or the Air Force. In this case, we went with all personnel met scheduled chalk time. So, if you look at the bullet that we have down there at the bottom, process 300 plus records with no errors during unit mobility exercise, semicolon, all personnel met scheduled chalk time. So, if we were referring to two or three part bullets, you could easily uh, determine which is which just based on how they're separated. In this case, you only have the two parts, so it's separated by a semicolon. There's no dash dash. So let's see how it looks on the actual form itself. All right, process 300 plus records. Looking good, and whoa! If we thought there was too much white space in the bullets before that, that is way too much white space. In this instance, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start reworking this bullet. I've gotta figure out what I can rename, rearrange, Throw in another word. I might even open my thesaurus up, open on my Word document, but I've got to figure out some way to get rid of all this white space in order to lend credibility to this bullet. Sergeant Cavanaugh, how can you reword this bullet in order for us to get what we need? Bam. Processed over 300 records with no errors during a unit mobility exercise. All personnel met scheduled chalk time. Bye bye white space. Brilliant. All we did was we took out the plus sign and added the word over. It's the same meaning, we just got rid of that white space. Very nice, very nice. If you notice though that this impact is still focused on the unit, but could some of the processing of those records have had an impact on the wing? Well, look at that, absolutely. And how do we get this information here? Processed 300 plus records with no errors during unit mobility exercise, so again, the confidence that really didn't change, contributed to Wing's outstanding rating. Well, how do you find this out? By simply going to the outbrief. Point being here, folks, supervisors, we have to go out and seek this sort of information. You know what I heard about at the Wing outbrief? What have you heard? I heard that the record processing procedure was named best practice and it's being implemented Air Force wide. So we can rearrange this whole bullet and if you find out that it is going to go further than just the wing, get that information and rework the bullet. Now we have in the whole same action, the whole same accomplishment, only we were able to rearrange the impact and put in procedure adopted slash implemented Air Force wide. So keep this in mind. It's this, all four bullets have all the same accomplishment. It's just the impacts that changed. We went from the unit to the wing to the Air Force. Keep that in mind. This is why we have to make sure we gather as much information as possible because the impact can always change. Okay, everyone. Now that we've discussed gathering and sorting information and the numerous writing tips such as too much white space, leaving out fluff words and not exaggerating but giving credit where credit is due, now it's your turn to apply these techniques and construct a bullet. We're going to post a comprehensive paragraph for you to sort out the information and construct a bullet. You can use a three or two part bullet format. So pause your video and when you're ready, push play. We'll come back and discuss the possible bullets you could have developed from the information provided. So strap on the old thinking caps because it's now it's your turn to practice.
Welcome back. We hope you were able to construct a bullet with an accomplishment and an impact. So let's look at some possible bullets that you could have constructed with the information provided. One example that we have here for you is you could have used selected by the 18th Operations Group Commander for the Initial Response Readiness Inspection Prep Team. They validated a 10-item interest area checklist and it was published in the base paper. We have an act, we have a fact, and we have an impact. So if you haven't caught on, this makes it a three-part bullet. Note the impact is focused on the individual, meaning published in base paper, it's only giving recognition to how it helped him or his career. It doesn't show the impact on the unit or the wing or even the Air Force. But I'm pretty sure that there was more information in there that we can actually improve on exactly who or what was impacted. Here's another one. Same accomplishment, didn't change, but the fact changed here. All we did was we used the uh, 26 Squadron Compliant and Staff Taskings. Now, the impact, first one, published in base paper, which was the individual. However, in the second one here, we took it to the next level, which is the wing. The wing personnel were well educated based on this person's action. We didn't exaggerate and it has more of an impact because it's had an impact on the wing versus just the, uh, the individual themselves. As supervisors, when composing bullets, we need to think beyond the individual if possible without exaggerating. In this case, we took not only the fact that we had 26 squadrons, but we ended up saying how many of the base personnel were affected. When you overhaul some contingency operations, you are going to ensure that your personnel are wartime ready. So if you go back and you look at that comprehensive paragraph we gave you, you would have been able to pick out this information. Earlier we told you the who, the what, how many. This is where we are gathering the how many. The 26 squadrons, that's important. You'll want to show exactly how many squadrons were affected. The 9.5 thousand, and thousand is represented here with the K. 9.5 thousand base personnel wartime ready actually translates into 9.5 thousand base personnel ready for an Air Force wide mission. All right, hopefully you all constructed a bullet that was similar to the ones we developed. If not, don't worry. Just go back and look at the paragraph again. Try to see how and where we were able to get the information to construct the bullets that we did. For those of you that are ready to move on, we have another comprehensive paragraph for you. Again, push pause and when you're ready to continue, just push play and we'll see if you were able to construct a bullet showing the accomplishment and impact with the information provided. Good luck. Welcome back, round two. Hopefully you were able to construct some bullets with an accomplishment and impact. If not, don't worry. We're still gonna give you plenty of examples to help you along the way. As we're giving you our examples, if you stop to wonder where exactly, how did they get that information or where did they see the information in that paragraph, take the time, rewind, look at the paragraph again, and then come back and try to determine and see exactly where we got that information. This is possibly your first time. We've done this for a while. So let's go ahead and let's move on to the bullets that we constructed out of the paragraph that we gave you. Here's another good three-part bullet that has an act, fact, and an impact, and it's at the individual level. Decrease Interlake Air Base DUIs. Worked with the commander to develop 10 products, won the Air Force Media Contest. Perfectly good bullet, but again, notice the impact is at what level? The individual level. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, but when you come up with a bullet, even though this sounds good, always think to yourself, can I take it to the next level? Can I make it better? Uh, the impact really, uh, not to take away from the accomplishment or the facts in there, but the impact is what really has the, the most impact, no pun intended, on the bullet itself. 
The accomplishment that you came up with, Sergeant Kavanaugh, it was pretty good. But I went on a different avenue for an accomplishment. I actually went to what he developed and the fact that he developed a broadcast campaign on DUIs and that he produced a TV and radio commercials, but I still had the same impact as you, won an Air Force Media Contest Award. Remember, when you're given multiple information, there are multiple accomplishments and even potential impacts that you can drive out of it. That's why it is so important to gather as much information as possible. You never know what information you are going to use to construct the best bullet with. Yes, we had a lot of information in that paragraph. That's why going back when we mentioned too much information is not enough. Um, the first two bullets are good, but the impact is focused again on the individual. I feel as though the biggest piece of information is the decrease in DUIs, which has an impact not only on the individual, the unit, or the wing, but also has an impact on the Air Force. In this case, spearheaded wing radio TV anti-DUI push. Uh, that's a pretty good accomplishment. Uh, one of the facts is the number one broadcast campaign in the 2013 Air Force Media Contest. Another strong fact to back up that accomplishment. And what is the impact? The DUIs went down 35%. So as you can see, the first bullet, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a good bullet. The second bullet, is there anything wrong with it? Absolutely not. However, the third one is the strongest bullet. It has all the critical information that you need to make a good quality bullet. I'll be honest, the fact that you were able to get a number one broadcast campaign and the percentage of DUIs being down 35%, I have to admit, this is probably one of the best written bullets I have seen in a very, very long time. Good job. You're welcome. Remember, every bullet has the potential of being the best. We were able to achieve it with this bullet because we made sure that it was accurate, brief, and specific. A lot of information was gathered. We tried to focus on the who, the what, the time, percentages, numbers. We did not exaggerate the accomplishment or the impact because we know that the reader is able to realize or see the implication that this person literally is the solution to all of our problems, that they broke the code to making things happen, that they invented water, walked on it, and turned it into wine. Just make sure you take the time to finalize your bullet statements. Bullet statements do not happen overnight, nor do they happen in one sitting. You'll probably write out your first bullet, walk away, come back and relook at it and realize where you can improve on it. As long as you reduce the unnecessary words, the fluff, the white space, don't, imp don't use personal pronouns or names. Trust me, you are going to be able to write effective bullets and get your individuals the recognitions they need in their EPR or the OPR. Just take your time and get the facts. Make sure you've got your act, your fact, and your impact. Okay folks, let's summarize what we've learned today. One of the biggest things to take away is why it's important to know how to write good bullets. There's only one reason, and it's our subordinates. As supervisors, we owe it to them to capture the great things they're doing and tell their story. If you're serious about taking our advice, then you should begin by collecting as much data as possible. As far as how you do this is entirely up to you. Some people like the old school way of business and annotate things as they happen in their daily planners. New school folks might use Excel, Word, or even some smartphone apps. Just do what works best for you. Once you have the data you need, start sorting out the information by keeping what's relevant, such as who, what, where, why, how much, how many, time, money saved, and numbers, numbers, numbers. Numbers. Once you have this information ready, you're ready to start writing, and when you do, Remember those writing tips we mentioned such as avoiding fluff words and statements and keep the white space to a minimum. We provided you some scenarios that we hope proved beneficial to getting in some good practice. You know the expression, practice makes perfect. However, in this case, your first several attempts might not be perfect, but as long as they're continuously getting better each time, you're on the right path to writing the right stuff. Right stuff. Thank you.